Daedra 182. The Daedra a lot of developments in the east. Here Russian forces concentrated their efforts on expanding the buffer zone to the north of Bakhmut to protect their flanks in the face of the imminent Ukrainian counteroffensive. They started pushing along the highway and even got notable results, but because they got too far from their air defense and were operating on a very narrow front, Russian losses have doubled and continue to stay at more than 1000 killed per day. Last time I told you that one of the main axes of Ukrainian counterattack was recently revealed by Russians because the concentration of Ukrainian forces in Minkivka and neighboring settlements has substantially increased. I also told you that in response to this development, Wagner's focused more than a third of their forces on this 5km front line in order to create a buffer zone as fast as possible. The freshest reports provided by the Ukrainian spokesman of the Eastern Group of Forces noted that the intensity of fights around Bakhmut increased even more. After establishing control over Dubovo Vasilivka, Russian forces struggled to move directly to Rihovo Vasilivka because of a natural barrier in the form of another hill. Russian forces shifted their fire on the Ukrainian strong point near the highway, and after they breached it, they could approach Ukrainian positions on this hill along the tree lines. Such a development exposed Ukrainian positions in Rihovo Vasilivka, and according to Russian sources, Ukrainians had to retreat from two checkpoints inside the village out of four due to the overwhelming crossfire. The main goal of the Russians is to get to Minkivka, exactly where Ukrainians have their forces concentrations. The idea here is to start attacking them before they launch a counterattack. This way Ukrainians will get entangled in positional fights, which will complicate offensive action significantly. The second thing Wagners are doing is trying to bridge the most fortified area inside Bakhmut, the Azom industrial area. Some sources reported that Wagners have already entered the northern part of the industrial area, however reports with recently made geolocated footage only confirmed that Russians maintained positions no closer than 800 meters from this complex. The main idea of attacking the most formidable defenses is that if Wagner somehow managed to breach it, then Bakhmut will fall very rapidly and there would be no point in making this massive counterattack. But such a risky and aggressive approach comes at a great cost. Since Wagner forces launched this highly attritional westward expansion, Russian losses have spiked once again. And if last week Russians were losing approximately 600 soldiers, then over the last three days, Russians are losing almost twice as many soldiers. Russian sources reported that Wagner's advances are constrained by artillery and mortar strikes, as well as air strikes. Because Wagner's are advancing along the very narrow line to the north of Bakhmut, Ukrainians are engaging their artillery units not only from Konstantinivka, but also Siversk. Ukrainian mortar units are shelling Russians from safe positions behind the canal in Novomarkove. Advancement along such a narrow line also means that Russians are getting too far from their air defense, which makes them vulnerable to air strikes. Yesterday it was confirmed that Ukrainians are freely engaging up to six fighter jets to bomb Russian strong points. Today it was also reported that three helicopter gunships are operating at low altitudes for the long running battle for Bakhmut. With that in mind, the spike in Russian losses is not surprising. In order to compensate for such levels of losses, the head of Wagner Group Prigozhin doubled down on expanding recruitment efforts in Russia. At first they were opening recruitment centers at sport clubs, but lately Wagner Group has also started focusing on youth. Wagner Group has recently opened six recruitment centers in schools. Russian Ministry of Education in Apatite included Wagner personnel at a career guidance lesson to tell heroic stories and promote the service in the Wagner Group. The Wagner Group likely aims to recruit more impressionable recruits through these youth-focused campaigns and instill in them Prigozhin's extreme ideology. Some Russian officials are even advertising contract service in unusual places. For example, it was recently revealed that a Moscow-based psychiatrist is calling on suicidal men to join army and die for a good cause. Overall, Wagner forces are trying to cancel the Ukrainian counteroffensive at any cost. Prigozhin understands that right now, the success of his 7-month-long campaign is at stake, and no matter the losses, he must somehow prevent it. Many analysts are saying that Ukrainians will likely launch their counteroffensive on Monday or Tuesday. However, Ukrainians are still controlling the positions on the biggest hill in the area, which does not allow Wagners to even clear the village, so Ukrainians should still have a little time to wait for the ground to dry up in order to increase the chances of their success. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, 
consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next report.